Hello, welcome to Ask Dr. Amy. Today we're going to talk about fever in kids. Before we get started, there's my little disclaimer. Basically, these videos are for information and for explanation purposes. They're not medical advice because I don't know the exact past medical history or the situation of your case. And these are not connected to any hospital or any organization that I work for. Okay, now let's talk about fever. First thing I'll say is don't panic. Fever itself is not as dangerous as it can seem. We'll talk about exactly what it is, what situations do make it dangerous, and what to do, etc. If you're actually looking for guidance about dosing fever medications for kids, please see my other video with a tutorial on the calculations. Fever often has to do with the immune system, and the information we'll talk about today applies to healthy kids with a normal immune system. The exceptions or the conditions that make this way of thinking not applicable include anything, first of all, that compromises the immune system, brings it down in some way. It can be something that people are born with or something that develops because of an illness or medication. A fever in those cases are much more serious. And number two, anything that increases a patient's risk for infection. For example, if they have any central lines or tubes or any extra foreign thing inserted into the body. Those things all make infections more likely. And again, fever is different in those cases. Now, number three, those who have metabolic syndromes that make it hard for the body to handle a higher metabolic demand. Because fever makes the body rev up into overdrive, then the patient might not handle the fever as well. All right, number four, if the kid is otherwise in a critical condition or has had chronic conditions, then fever or the response to fever in those cases are not as predictable. And next, if the child is not vaccinated, we have to think of their risk profile separately because they're not protected against a few serious diseases. So fever in these kids can signal something much more dangerous. So that doesn't apply to what we're talking about. The next category I'll put in parentheses, febrile seizures. It's in parentheses because it's not a true exception. The majority of kids who have febrile seizures are otherwise healthy with a normal immune system, but it's on this list because it's just a separate thing that I want to talk about on its own. So please see my other video that is just about febrile seizures. And lastly, fever is a different game in young infants under two months. The rule of thumb is in the first month to six weeks, a fever should mean go to the hospital, no questions asked. And then up to about two months, still take the baby to the pediatrician's office or the hospital and don't just treat the fever at home. And the information in this video doesn't apply to the baby until they're a bit older. All right, so now that we've spent a long time talking about what does not apply, let's get to the real topic. The technical definition of fever is the temperature above 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. But the fever in itself is not an illness. That increase in temperature is a mechanism in the activation of our body's immune system that helps to fight the infection. And the immune system is that part of the body that protects us against foreign bacteria or viruses. For one, the increase in temperature is supposed to slow the proliferation of bacteria or virus. Although there's no real evidence that treating the fever prolongs the illness or allows the bacteria or virus to grow more. So don't be afraid to treat the fever thinking that it'll stop the immune system. The second part of fever is that it enhances the response of the immune system. It turns on the production of cells like neutrophils or T lymphocytes. You can think of these cells like soldiers who fight and clear out the things that cause disease. The immune system is always there in the background, but it takes a signal in the body to be turned on and start attacking something that the body has identified as the enemy. I like to think of it like the moment in Pac-Man when Ms. Pac-Man eats the power pellet and goes into a state of attack. And the music changes, the colors change. In the same way, the immune cells start chasing the bacteria or virus when they're turned on, and also more of them are generated. So we can compare the fever to that change in music, something that sets the stage and signals that the process has started. Again, there's no evidence that relieving the high temperature stops this process. So don't be afraid to treat the symptoms of fever. And we'll talk about later when to treat it. And when this all happens, the bacteria or the virus, which caused us to be sick or caused the invasion, 
become targets like the little blue ghosts being eaten up by the immune system. In any case, when we get sick, a lot of us feeling crummy is actually due to our immune system's attack instead of just because of the offending agent. For example, it's why we produce snot and phlegm or secretions in general, trying to flood out the bad stuff. So fever defined as just that rise in temperature is not harmful to the body. It will not cause brain damage, which is a common concern. Brain damage can be caused by diseases like meningitis, which has fever as one of the symptoms, but it's not the temperature, but the disease itself that can cause the damage. So that's why we as pediatricians are always looking for signs of meningitis. But without those danger signs, there's no reason to think the fever is damaging the brain. It can be normal for kids to have high fevers, especially in response to everyday viruses, which just pass with time. And it can be normal for that fever to persist for a few days. So let's not be, quote, fever phobic, which is a word mentioned in the American Academy of Pediatrics article about fever. And fever phobia can be in parents, in patients, in doctors. Now there are times to get concerned. And examples of that are when the fever reaches a high of about 105 degrees, or when the fever comes every day beyond five days. Or if the fever comes with any dangerous symptoms, such as extreme headache, confusion, neck stiffness, by the way, those are some of the things that make us think of meningitis. Or there can be other symptoms like loss of balance or anything that just seems odd and not just your run-of-the-mill cough congestion with fever. So in these situations, definitely take your kid to the hospital or to the doctor's office or when in doubt, call your pediatrician and ask. And I need to say this again, if the newborn has a fever, even if they otherwise look fine to you without any of the symptoms we just talked about, still go to the hospital. Newborns are vulnerable to a different group of illnesses and we don't mess around with them when they have a fever. So I want to reassure you that the higher temperature itself is not a dangerous thing, but this does not replace talking to a doctor and getting the kid evaluated when you're in doubt. Now next, fever doesn't have to be dangerous, but it can lead to dangerous effects. So our next question is what to do about it? Do we treat or not treat? And that's where the effect of the fever becomes super important. The rule of thumb here is to treat fever with things like Tylenol or Motrin, for example, if the fever is causing symptoms. One of the important symptoms is if the fever is making the kid feel too crummy to drink. Now, fever already increases the metabolic demand, like we talked about. It rests the body into overdrive, so we lose more water just through our skin and just by breathing. So if we add all of that to not drinking well, then it becomes much more easy to become dehydrated in general. Other symptoms of fever can include pain or not having energy, really fussy or really sleepy. And those fever medications are also pain controllers. So often you can treat multiple things with one medicine. Again, if you want some guidance on which medicine to give or how much to give, please see the other dosage tutorial video. Now let's say if your kid has a fever but no symptoms, and sometimes kids can do that. They handle fever much better than adults sometimes. So they just have a temperature above 38, but they're acting fine. They're running around, eating, drinking. Then the recommendation from the Academy of Pediatrics says there's really no reason to just treat the number because the number itself is not a dangerous thing. So bottom line is let's treat the fever if there are symptoms associated. Now, after a proper dose of fever medication, we would expect the kid to act more like him or herself once the temperature is regulated. So at that point, if they're still extremely lethargic, not able to wake up or drink or just not acting right, that's another sign to go to the hospital. So overall, let's think of fever not as the end-all problem, the thing we're most afraid of, but think of it as a sign that the immune system is turned on to fight something. And we can use it as a tool to tell us where we are in the underlying disease as it progresses, how many days. And also use it as a reminder to look for the other dangerous signs we talked about that would signal a need to talk to the doctor. Thank you very much for stopping by today. If you have a question about this video or there's another topic you would like to see, please leave a comment and I'll see you next time.